Well, now we're going to talk about the producer-consumer exercise we just did, where you worked with Flush to handle synchronization between a producer and a consumer. This is getting into some advanced stuff here, so bear with me. The code in particular that we worked with inside that file prod underscore cons dot C, producer consumer. All right, very simple. We have one function that's going to fill an array of random values, another function that's going to sum them. So of course, you got to wait until the fill is done before the sum can continue. That's what we're going to do right here. All right, so this is going to require something called pairwise synchronization because you have a distinct pair of threads that need to synchronize, need to coordinate what they do. OpenMP does not have any built-in pairwise synchronization. You might think that seems a little strange, but it's, it's actually not, okay? Because with OpenMP, we were very careful that programs have a serial reading. Now, now, I mentioned this earlier when I talked about how cool it was that I could add a pragma to my loop pi program and that I could have the same semantics whether it ran serially or whether it ran in parallel. The second you have built-in pairwise synchronization, you're now creating programs that don't have a serial reading. It's just the algorithm fundamentally breaks if you try and run it serially. Um, yes, indeed, we're now talking about a concurrent application, right? Because there's fundamental built-in that these things have to happen concurrently at the same time. There is no serial reading of it. Okay, and OpenMP was not built for concurrent applications. It was built for parallel applications. So it wasn't an oversight that OpenMP doesn't have built-in pairwise synchronization. It was by design. So what we're doing here is we're doing something unnatural and twisted to OpenMP. So how do we do pairwise synchronization in OpenMP? So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to define a flag variable. So a variable, I'll, I'll even call it flag so we can keep it straight. All right. The reader is going to do something called a spin lock. So what it's going to do is it's going to spin, which basically means an infinite loop, checking the value of flag. And it's going to wait until the value of flag changes, and then it will know it's time to do something. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put the right flushes in so that the coordination between the producer and the consumer works. Here is a version of this code, and now I'm going to tell you something here. You're going to look at this code here. This code works 99.999% of the time on almost every machine out there today. But there's technically a bug in it, and we will, before we're done, fix that bug. So here's this code. Let's walk through it real carefully. All right? We've got our array that we're going to fill. And now I have pragma parallel sections. And I'm going to have one section be the producer, one section be the consumer. Now, if I was real picky here, and I, I didn't do this so the code would be small enough. I will put logic into this, this code to verify that I got two threads. This requires there be two threads at least. All right, so that's not shown on this code, but I would add that. And you now, from an earlier module, know how to do that. So I would make sure that I do not have one thread. I really have to have more than one thread here because I really have to have one section running in one thread and one section running in another, another thread. It's easiest if we start with the producer, then go to the consumer. So the producer is that first one, and it's going to call fill rand. And then when it's done, I'm going to flush, because I want to make the value of the array I just created visible to other threads. So that's why after I'm done with fill rand, I have a pragma OMP flush. And that's my way of saying, hey, guys, I've created this array A. I want anyone who wants to see it to be able to see it. Great. Now I want to communicate the flag. Now the flag I'm going to use to tell anyone else interested, my consumer, that, all right, it's now time for you to grab A and do what you're going to do with it. So I set flag 1. Flag was a shared variable, initialized to 0. Now I set it to 1. And now I flush, pragma OMP flush flag. And so that's my way of saying, hey, guys, now look at my flag. I'm going to make flag visible. All right? That's pretty easy. Let's look at the consumer. So the consumer, that's the second, second section. And so what it's going to do is it's going to do a spin lock. So basically, I'm showing you how to implement what people doing concurrent programming call a spin lock. So I have to make sure I grab the current value of flag. Now I'm going to look at my value of flag, and I'm going to spin around while that flag is 0. So notice I have a loop. While flag is 0, keep spinning through that loop. 
Now, here's the key, and this kind of throws people at first, so I want you really to think hard about it. Inside the body of the loop, I have to have a flush of that flag. Now, let me explain why. This is kind of tricky. Not to you compiler writers out there. Those of you who, who did well in your compiler writing class, you know this already. Okay, but people like me, I'm a, you know, a physicist and a chemist. What do I know about compiler writing? So let me tell you. A compiler can be very clever and can look at a variable and say, hey, I can just stick this in a register because I don't see it being reading, read and written. I don't see its value changing in this block of code. So it's really, really efficient if I sit it in a register. So without that flush, it could just keep on pulling that flag value in the register equal to zero, and it will never see the new value. So by putting that flush in the body of the loop, I am forcing the compiler to every time it goes into that loop to go all the way back down through the memory hierarchy and grab a flush va fresh value of the flag. That's why that's got to be there. You've got to have the flush in the body of the loop. Now, because I used flush of just the flag, Remember, a flush, a general flush is really, really expensive, so I wanted to save myself a headache by just flushing the flag value. What that means is, is I could upload the new value of flag and never refresh the value of A. Remember, flush sets, if they're a non-overlapping flush set, they can move past each other. So, after the loop, when it's seen the value of flag change, I have to do one more flush, but now it's a flush without a, a list, so I'll flush everything and pick up flag. And now I can do my consumption of that array A. All right, are you with me? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to look at this and think about it. All right, there's one and only one reason why this program works. And this, by the way, works. Now, if there's a memory model purist, they're jumping up and down and turning red and foaming at the mouth right now. The reason this program works is because you notice the consumer and the producer don't care what the value of flag is. All they care is when it stops being equal to zero. So I don't need to worry about if I pick up an incompletely updated value of flag. So I submit, even though this program technically has a race, and it has a race on what is the actual value of flag when the consumer checks it. And it does because I did not protect the updates and reading of flag. So we'll get to that in a second. But this program's almost always gonna work because all I'm looking for is, is flag not zero? So if I have a trashed, incompletely updated value of flag from the producer to the consumer, I'm still gonna get that while loop to drop out and things will still work. But this program technically has a race. How are we gonna fix that? Let me show you. Atomics. Remember long, long ago in our childhood when I told you about the atomic is sort of a lightweight critical section, and that was true. But the atomic didn't quite do everything that you might want it to do, particularly if you're into writing these kinds of low-level synchronization type codes. Atomic didn't go anywhere near far enough. So what we did in OpenMP 3.1 and since then is we added more versions of atomic. So now you have these arguments you can pass to atomic. You can have an atomic read, an atomic write, an atomic update, and an atomic capture. All right? And basically, if I went through and spent a long time going through each and every one of these, it would take a long time, and I'm not sure how valuable it is. So I'm just going to point out a few of the key added features of these atomics that we're actually going to use. So what atomic read does is it says that I either do this complete read, this complete load, or I don't do it at all. I can't possibly have an incomplete load, all right? So in this example, I have v for variable equals x. That means I can't see v equal to half the upload of x. I can't see it equal to just 90% of the upload of x. No, it's gonna see the whole update of x or it's not gonna see it at all. So I'm protecting that read of x. Okay, write does the same thing. It's gonna, um, it's gonna store a value into the variable x, but it does it atomically. And atomic means it happens all the way or not at all. So I will either not see the update to x, or I will see the complete update to x. And there are these other atomics as well. But now if we look at my code, and now we can see the total race-free, correct version of this program. 
And you can see that what I changed here is I've now protected the updates, the write and the read of flag. So bear with me here. Just like before, I've got a pragma OMP sections. I've got the parallel, so I've got at least, and I, and I, and I would verify that there are at least two threads. Okay, I'm gonna have one section be the producer, one section be the consumer. Now let's start with the producer. I have the pragma OMP flush because I've finished my production work, I've finished filling that array A. Now I'm gonna do the atomic right of flag. I'm gonna protect the right of the flag so it is impossible for anyone to see anything but the complete update to that flag. All right, then I flush the flag. So the only difference here is I added pragma atomic right so I do a safe, complete update of flag. Now let's go to the consumer. Things are a little different here. Now what I've done is I've changed the code a little bit so I actually care what value flag has. I care that the value of flag is equal to one. All right, so I have my while loop, but this time notice I made the while loop an infinite loop, while one. All right, so I'm putting the logic of exit inside the loop. So now I'm gonna do a flush, so I get a fresh value of the flag, and now I'm gonna do an atomic read. So I either see the complete read or no read at all to get a temporary value of the flag. And then when that equals value one, I break out of that infinite loop, okay? Now I know it's safe that the consumer is, the, produ the producer is done, so now I do my full flush and I consume A. This is a race-free, correct version of doing the uh, producer-consumer pairwise synchronization that will work 100% of the time on 100% of the machine. All right, now my advice to you is if you look at this and go, oh, I wanna write code like this, is find a psychologist to help you and talk you out of your insanity. All right, this, this is very, very challenging code to write and the majority of you should be aware of this stuff and able to play with it should you ever need to, but most people shouldn't be doing this kind of thing. But you know, we wanted OpenMP to be complete. It wasn't, we weren't comfortable with the fact that there were whole classes of programs, whole things you wanted to do like lock-free data structures or complex producer-consumer relationships, concurrent applications. You know, why shouldn't we be able to do those in OpenMP? So that's why we keep flush in there and that's why we added these atomics. So this is fun stuff for you to know and for a complete well-rounded knowledge of OpenMP, I think it's really good for you to go through and get this stuff. But I cannot stress enough, my advice to you is you probably should never use this.